Uh, so hello, hi everyone, and welcome to this event organized by the Catalan National Assembly in England, Ireland, uh, and Scotland. Last Thursday was the 1st of October. Uh, it marks three years since the Catalan independence referendum, which made it to the wall pages because of the millions voting and exercising their democratic rights and, def and defending the polling stations against brutality of the Spanish police, which tried to mitigate democratic uh, mandate by assaulting polling stations. While 90% of voters uh, vote for independence, the Spanish regime man managed to avoid the compliance with the referendum mandate, sent the Catalan government in prison and exile, and we've seen three years of repression now. To talk about the historic day three years ago and provide opinion on the Catalan question and import in importance of international solidarity, we have organized this panel. Uh, we have today with us uh, Huey Williams, MP for Arfon, uh, for Plate Camry and Chair of the APPG on Catalonia. Also principal sponsor of the early day motion last week condemning the removal of Catalan president Kim Torra. Also with us, Agnes McNeil, member of parliament of the Scottish National Party. Uh, also Joanna Pujol, chair uh, of the Catalan National Assembly International Commission. Paul Maskey, Sinn Féin MP for West Belfast and Sean Harking, people before profit counselor in Derry. Also with me chairing this event, Carlos Pujol of ANC, uh, ANC Ireland and Carla Suarez uh, of ANC England. Uh, welcome to all of you and thank you for following us. So now with no further delay, I give um, the floor to Joanna. Joanna, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and many thanks to the Catalan National Assembly in Ireland, Scotland, and England for organizing this event. There are days which last years. The 1st of October in 2017 was one of those days. It's probably the most important day for many Catalan generations. Three years ago last week, I was in a polling station in my town, a village 30 miles from Barcelona. We had to occupy the school where the vote was to take place three days before the referendum. We slept in the school for two nights. Outside, raining, intense. Inside, 80-year-old people sleeping on the floor, knowing the police could arrive at any time. The whole town was engaged in the referendum prep. Grandmothers doing crochet, young people playing football, activities for children, all to guarantee that on Sunday at 9 a.m. the school would be open and would remain open for the whole day until the vote recount. When news came of the Spanish police assault in nearby towns, there was a spread of panic followed by the common resolution to protect the polling station. They never came to my town. That's not the story I'm trying to tell you today. It's a story of self-organization, a story of farmers never engaged in political protests, protecting the school with their tractors. It's a story of empowerment with thousands of citizens of different class and different ideology, old and young, students and civil servants, unemployed and shop owners coming together, organizing barriers Decades, storming heaven, making history. We showed the world that our commitment to independence was incorruptible, and we showed ourselves that the victory was within our means, that we could overcome Spanish repressive forces. If one disobeys an unfair law, that is a criminal offense. If thousands disobey an unfair law, that is political action. We are thankful for those in the United Kingdom who offered words of support for that political action and to those that condemned this act of violence of the Spanish regime. International leaders like the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, as well as then Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who were amongst the first to criticize the act, this action, we say thank you. However, far too many remain idle. While it is shameful that the Spanish regime had to use force to stop the democratic will of the people, it is also shameful 
that the European Union did not take steps to intervene. Three years have passed, and we have seen the Catalan government in prison and exile. The two former leaders of my organization, Jordi Sanchez and Karma Furcadell, have been in jail since the autumn of 2017. We have seen a shameful trial, which will be studied by future generations as one of the last strikes of the Spanish Inquisition. We have seen young activists being accused of terrorism and spending months in jail. We've seen more than 2,000 people repressed by the Spanish regime the last three years. Singers go to exile for their lyrics. Websites shut down. MPs being suspended. Even the president of Catalonia, Kim Torra, was suspended only last week for just displaying a banner claiming the freedom of political prisoners. Which, by the way, thanks Mr. Williams for promoting the early day motion into Parliament last week, asking the British government to intervene in the Catalan question. Three years have passed, and yet the will of the people has, has still not been acted on. Three years have passed, and yet we are still not independent. Today's event and events to come are needed more than ever to increase awareness of Catalonia's right to take its freedom. We are three years on, and now the international community just cannot stand by. Support from state and regional governments, political parties, social movements, and the wider public are needed to ensure Catalonia gain its freedom. Let's therefore not just remember the past three years, but instead, let's plan ahead and reaffirm our alliances for our common goals. The fight against injustice, the fight for a world where self-determination is not a crime, but a democratic right, where climate and social rights are protected, where national repression and fascism are confined to the dark spin of history. Let's storm heaven together again, as the fight for independence of Catalonia is the fight for democracy everywhere. Thank you very much. Thanks, Giovanna, uh, for, for your intervention and your explanation. Uh, now, if you agree, uh, Paul, I pause. Uh, it's your turn to, to explain your, your views. Thank you. Was that for myself, was it, Laura? Yep. Sorry, thank you. Obviously, um, I want to thank the, the organizers for inviting, obviously, Sinn Féin to, to say a few words here. And on behalf of Sinn Féin, we're always glad to be asked to speak before new audiences as well. So we want to share our perspective and solidarity with those who are also struggling for the right of self-determination. For those in your audience unfamiliar with Sinn Féin, Sinn Féin is an Irish Republican party, and we are a party of the left. We are a progressive party. We are a party of activism deeply rooted in the communities we represent and we strive to be agents for change and equality. We are organized across the entire island of Ireland, and we are in government in the north, and we are in the lead opposition in the south of Ireland. And I am a Sinn Féin MP, but unlike two of my colleagues on their platform this evening from SNP, Angus and Clyde um, Hull, I am an abstentionist MP, and I don't take my seat in an English parliament. So that is obviously a long-standing Republican tra tradition from our own party going back over 100 years, and that won't be changing anytime soon. But to be honest, when sometimes you see some of the, the goings on within Westminster, I am glad that we took the decision to be abstentionist to the same piece. So as has been said, we are three years since the Catalan referendum. The referendum are respective of what the result was should have been and remembered as a triumph of democracy and political dialogue. Sadly, what the world witnessed that day was not a celebration of democracy. Instead, we saw shocking scenes of Spanish police brutality and intimidation. Peaceful citizens who were protecting the integrity of polling stations were struck down and savagely beaten. There were reports of over 900 people being injured. All people, physically assaulted as they tried to enter polling stations, plastic bullets fired in the crowds of innocent people. 
all because people wanted to exercise their right to vote. Sinn Féin was very happy to part of many international delegations who travelled to observe that referendum. And my colleagues on that delegation still talk about the brutality to this day. The silence of the European Union in the wake of the referendum was shameful, as was the silence of the Dublin government. There is a particular onus on Ireland to stand with people struggling for independence, as was the silence of other um, countries throughout Europe. So when the Irish people voted for independence in December 18, we stood along on the world stage over 100 years ago. It was accept unacceptable that the Irish government held its tongue and allowed the Catalan people to stand alone in their hour of need. There should be no hesitation when it comes to standing against the state violence and in support of democratic norms. But as we have seen increasingly in recent times, the Spanish state's commitment to democracy can be somewhat flexible depending on the need of those who are in power. As it happens, my last meeting in London before COVID-19 pandemic overtook all of our lives was to meet with the president of the parliament of Catalonia, Roger Torrent. And I was therefore shocked to hear over the summer that the Spanish secure cats had Roger under surveillance and had been bugging his phones and tapping his WhatsApp. Such tactics are not unfamiliar to Irish Republicans. Those tactics are fundamentally anti-democratic and ultimately will always doom to fail. The pursuit of national self-determination is a noble and legitimate cause. It is time that those in power across Europe accept and recognize this. Facilitating people's rights to vote is certainly not a crime. Calling for an amnesty is not a crime. There are political issues, not legal ones. So the recent decision of the Spanish Supreme Court to uphold the barring of President Quinn Torra from public office was an absolute disgrace. So it was welcome to see the condemnation from progressive forces across Europe, but yet again, official Europe remained silent. It was welcome to see other, others condemning that as well. Pressures need to be brought to bear on those who profess to love democracy. But when the going gets tough, get in the line and part Madrid's script. Tora Quim was banned from public office for displaying a banner in support of imprisoned Catalan leaders. The symbols are neither undemocratic or criminal. The yellow ribbon is a symbol of democracy and national self-determination. It is a symbol of human rights. Democrats in the international community cannot look the other way. So on behalf of Sinn Féin, I would like to stand, extend our solidarity with Quira, uh, Kim Tora and all the Catalonian people. We also extend our solidarity to all the political prisoners. As Irish Republicans, the plight of prisoners in any struggle is always a cause of concern, especially when many are held on the basis of trumped up political motivated charges. The Spanish government needs to enter into meaningful dialogue with the Catalan government to find an agreed path forward. The judicial legal system cannot serve as a barrier to self-determination. So on behalf of Sinn Féin again, I call on the immediate release of Catalan prisoners and for a general amnesty to allow for those currently in exile to return home. Politics is about finding solutions. The future of the Catalan countries will not be decided by the courts or the judges. It will be decided by the people. As ever, the power of people is stronger than the power, people in power. So we have much to learn from each other. The politics of national liberation is the politics of engaging and energizing ordinary people. As, as activists, we, we are built for agitating, built for pushing for change, and that's what we'll, we will all make happen. So such are the times when we get a referendum, we need to ensure that that happens again. But we are doing the work of learning of the lessons of the Catalan experience and indeed the Scottish experience. We want an independence referendum here in Ireland also. So what advice would we offer from our own experience here? It would only be to remain vigilant and spot opportunities for advancement when they come along. Few within our own movement saw the success of the February elections coming this year. So every so often, a window appears where movements have the potential to steer history in a new direction. The great Irish Republican and land agitator James Fenton Lollard once summarized 
If the opportunity offers, we must dash that opportunity. If driven to the wall, we must wheel for the resistance. That's what we have always tried to do, and that is how we will win in the end. So, folks, we stand with the Catalonian people. We stand with you in solidarity. We have stood with these in the past. We stand with you now, and we will stand with you in the future. Let's stand together. Thank you, Paul, uh, and thank you for your solidarity with, with Catalonia. And now it's the turn of Sean. Sean, if you want to start now, thanks. Thank you, Laura. And uh, thank you to the uh, Catalan National Assembly for the opportunity to come and uh, be part of this uh, very, very important panel discussion this evening. Um, and uh, uh, as a member of People Before Profit, I bring uh, People Before Profit's greetings to the panelists and to the uh, assemblies and extend our solidarity to the Catalan people and the struggle for self-determination and for the uh, democracy. Um, I'll say a bit about People Before Profit for people who maybe aren't as familiar with us. Uh, we're a 32 county socialist party. We have representatives in the north and south of Ireland. Uh, we try to campaign uh, in both sides of the island to bring people together around social justice and labour struggles uh, to improve their lives. Uh, we want to see a border poll held as soon as possible to end partition and uh, which has been something that will be, have been in existence now for 100 years come next year. And it's really been a disaster for uh, all people on this island. Um, we want to have a border poll to end partition and begin the process uh, of establishing a new Ireland. Uh, for us, that would be an Ireland based on the vision of James Connolly, the great uh, socialist and fighter against British imperialism. And uh, the kind of island that he expounded is the kind that I think many more people are eager to see uh, in these very, very challenging times of health crisis, economic crisis, uh, climate change, and all the other big problems that we face. So we think that there's every opportunity and every possibility that we can bring about a new and a different kind of Ireland based on justice, solidarity, and equality. Uh, and it's for those reasons that we stand in solidarity with the people of Catalonia. Uh, we stand in solidarity with the people of Catalonia, the people of Scotland, the people of Palestine and people elsewhere who are campaigning and struggling uh, for their democratic uh, rights and their democratic aspirations. Um, and so we uh, are three years on now from the historic events of October 1st, 2017, and they were historic because on that day, uh, the Catalan people overwhelmingly uh, said that they wanted to create an independent state. And they sent that message to the world and the world very much responded. And we've seen the response of the Spanish state, a state that says it is based on democracy. But what we actually seen and what the world seen was an attempt to crush a peaceful movement using violence, using lies, uh, and doing everything to stop uh, people expressing their democratic rights. So I think that uh, we are fully in support of the ongoing struggle uh, for Catalan independence. And we hope that uh, in, in looking at the uh, events of uh, 2017, October 1st, people will be emboldened and further inspired to carry on, on the fight. Um, in terms of what we have done here, uh, I, I, I met uh, Carlos and others who traveled. Uh, they were part of a, a grouping, uh, including the firefighters who came to tell us the story uh, of the struggle for Catalan independence um, and, why, uh, and what we could do to stand in solidarity. And here in Derry, uh, myself, Benema McCann, my fellow councillor, we put forward a motion uh, that argued a number of things. Uh, it, it, to the Derry and Strabane Council. We argued that the council should stand in solidarity with the Catalan demand for self-determination and democracy. And it was agreed to do that. 
We also called on the Spanish state to end its violence against the peaceful movement. We called for the Spanish state to end the criminalization of the Catalan independence movement and to release uh, all the political prisoners, um, to rescind the jail sentences um, and to end the forced exile on many of the leaders who had done nothing but peacefully campaign uh, for a democratic aspiration um, that uh, everybody around the world should be able to uh, uh, fight for. We also called on the European Union to end its complicity and its silence uh, for what was happening to the people in Ca Catalonia. Now, I think on this issue, it's very, very important. We have a, an entity who claims to stand uh, for democracy, to bring together nations in Europe for a different kind of democratic order. Uh, but here in this instant, this instance, they turned away from the democratic demands of the Catalan people and backed up the Spanish state's violence, repression and lies. And I think it has got done great damage to the authority of the European Union. And it's also done great damage to the project that it sells out and, and claims to exist for. I think it's forfeited its right to claim to be a democratic institution. Uh, and uh, as far as the Catalan people were concerned, there were no allies in, uh, to be found in the leadership of the EU. So we continue to make that demand on the European Union that they change course um, and speak up and speak out and support uh, the democratic rights of the Catalan people. We also agreed to invite a, a, a representative of the Catalan struggle to Derry. Um, and that was agreed and that was something that we were working on and we were actually very, very excited about. Uh, and many others were very, very excited about this as well. But unfortunately, um, the pandemic uh, has interrupted that. Uh, and we very much hope that at the first opportunity, uh, when we have some degree of uh, normality returning, that we will be able to follow up on that and have a representative of the capital and struggle come to Derry to speak directly to the people of this district uh, about their struggle uh, and about the connections between the struggle here in Ireland and the struggle uh, in Catalonia, but also to speak uh, uh, across Ireland uh, to uh, give people a, a real insight into the struggle. So uh, I'll wrap up now. Um, and again, I just want to extend uh, people before profits solidarity with the Catalan struggle. Um, we believe in internationalism. We think it's very important to speak out and stand in solidarity. Uh, I know that it will be meaningful for people in, Ca in uh, Catalonia to hear that they have support from so many places around the world. That's often true when you're facing police battens, prison sentences. It's very important that people uh, around the world speak out and stand in solidarity. So we hope that you're inspired by the struggle, uh, uh, by the, uh, you know, by the uh, uh, commemorating October 1st, uh, which in theory established uh, the Republic. Um, and we hope that when uh, Catalonia is able to establish uh, itself as an independent uh, uh, sovereign state, we'll be joining you here in Ireland with the establishment of a workers' republic in the tradition of James Connolly. Thank you. Thanks, John, um, for, for your speaking. Uh, now, um, apologies in advance if I don't pronounce correctly your name. Uh, it's the turn of Huey Williams. Uh, Huey, please uh, feel free to, to start your talk. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. And uh, don't worry about my name. It's been mispronounced all my life. Um, my, <laughs> my name is Howell Williams. I'm the Member of Parliament for Arvon in the northwest of Wales for Plaid Cymru, uh, the party of Wales. And I'm delighted to join you uh, tonight. Uh, I join you as the chair of the all party group on Catalonia in the House of Commons. It is an all party group. We have members from all parties and from the House of Commons and from the House of Lords. I'll say something about that again in a moment. Um, it is three years on from uh, the referendum. And so I thought I'd just speak on three points. 
Uh, I was in Barcelona with other foreign parliamentarians for the October referendum. Um, we'd travelled around all morning, uh, seeing the huge and uh, quiet and very dignified queues of people waiting to vote. They've been standing patiently and, and peacefully uh, for hours. And of course, there had been people in the polling stations sleeping overnight. Uh, they were, I suppose, men and women, uh, old and young alike, all uh, determined to vote. Then around uh, one in the afternoon, we had a call. Um, the police were on their way to a nearby polling station. So we went over there to see what was happening. And now we arrived on one side of the huge crowd there and uh, the police uh, arrived at the other. They arrived and I watched as the police clubbed and beat their way into the polling station, uh, breaking down the doors and then carrying out the ballot boxes uh, shoulder high in triumph, uh, their work done uh, to the shouts of, of the crowd uh, shouting no pasaran. Now, I was reporting back to Wales down the line all day and um, I turned my phone on uh, and turned to it and uh, this is what I said. I had a look now, if you allow me just to read. Um, what I said to the people in Wales from that polling station as the police were leaving with the ballot boxes and the votes of the people, I said, I had never thought in my life that I would see in an European democratic country the police raiding a police polling station to deny people the right to vote. This is a disgrace on the Spanish states. Now, later on, of course, the police action throughout that day, and of course later, was called uh, by the representatives of the responsible state, it was called exemplary. Uh, now, I cannot in any way imagine how what I saw on that day could be described as exemplary. It was clear repression. It was a clear suppression of democracy. Whatever one's thoughts about Catalan independence are, and I am in favour of Catalan independence as I am in favour of independence from my own country of Wales. But whatever one thinks of the, that particular proposition, what happened that day was and remains a disgrace. The second thing I'd like to draw attention to is just the trial of the political and civil leaders in Madrid. Um, we can discuss these later, I, I take it we are going to have questions, but let's just have a think for a moment about the trial in Madrid. Um, I was over there uh, with Chris Banbury, who's uh, the information officer for the All Party Group. We went over for one day uh, to observe the trial, and I have to say we were treated by the Spanish authorities with, with courtesy. Um, it was all done very properly indeed, and the, as far as the process of what we saw, of course, we couldn't fault it because it was all carried out with, uh, with uh, the usual legal ceremony. I asked uh, when we were sitting in the well of the court, I asked uh, our Catalan friend, um, uh, who are those people sitting on the right? Opposite where we were, there were, I think there were seven or even eight uh, who were clearly lawyers and uh, two of them were leading on the case. And I asked her, uh, who are they? And I was told, um, well, firstly in that row of people, you have the state's prosecutors and then uh, the other three, uh, those three who are saying nothing, they are the representative of Vox, the neo-fascist party. They've joined in the prosecution, but have indicated that they are happy for the states to lead on their behalf. Now, commenting on another state's new process, new legal process, really is a minefield. It's, it's something that one should be hugely careful of. But I am still astonished that a hostile political party, such as Vox, a party of the stripe of Vox, a neo-fascist party, can join in the state's prosecution of their political opponents. I mean, that, that's, I, it beggars belief. Now, every state has its own legal process, I know. But um, even though on the day the process was being carried out with, with decorum, as far as I could see, we don't know what the result was, and the result was the jailing of political and social leaders uh, for uh, 
expressing their own ideas for gaining the support of so many people and then carrying uh, those uh, those uh, ideas into practice and holding a referendum. Now, I cannot see how that trial can be justified. And this is exemplified for me by the fact that uh, the prosecution was joined in by these representatives from a neo-fascist party. That still astonishes me. And lastly, the third point I would draw to attention of people listening in is uh, uh, we have the case against President Ora and many, many others, of course, many people who have uh, been prosecuted and barred from political office and have been confined to the towns and to their villages, uh, 2,000 and more, I think, is the number. But the case in points, the one that exemplifies what's happening today is the case against President Tora and his removal from office uh, for, I mean, as has already been said, for allowing a banner which expresses support for free speech and for democracy. Again, I think this is something that I never thought I would see, uh, the courts of the states removing a, a democratically elected politician from office for expressing, uh, indirectly in this case, for expressing his opinions. Now, as an all party group, uh, we try to influence the government in London and uh, we have uh, meetings, we have speakers, occasionally we ask questions, uh, we have had debates, but we also put down statements of opinion. These are called early day motions. As such, they are merely statements of opinion, but they do provide the opportunity for politicians of all parties to indicate uh, their uh, support one way or the other. And I put down a statement of opinion on President Torres' uh, removal from office. And I'm glad to say that it has attracted the support of 23 MPs so far uh, from across the House, from political parties uh, of all sorts. And I just thought I'd, I'd read you the text. Um, people don't read these usually. You know, they see how many have signed and then they think, oh, that's very good or that's very bad or whatever. But uh, we wrote this very carefully. And if uh, you'd allow me, Chair, I'll just read this out. The statement is that this House notes its great concern at the decision of the Spanish Supreme Court to remove the President of Catalonia, Quintora, from office by banning him from holding public posts. Notes that the decision was taken because banners calling for support for the rights of Catalan political prisoners were displayed on the government's buildings and were not taken down immediately when the court ruled that they must be taken down. Believes that this case centers on the fundamental rights to free speech and that the court's verdict in this case is a severe blow to that right as well as to democracy. And so calls on the Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth and Development Affairs to convey these concerns most strongly to the Spanish government. Now, that is one step ahead for us in Parliament. It will be followed up by further uh, attempts at debates, at questions, but that at least is a statement of where we stand. And I'm very glad to say that it has been welcomed by many people and I'm very grateful for the support that we've had, uh, reciprocal support from our friends in Catalonia uh, to that stand. I'd just like to finish with uh, one little point about um, how all of this has been received um, across Europe as far as the European Union is concerned and specifically in the UK and in Wales. And I think this illustrates how the smaller countries in, in Europe must stand together. And if I may say so, as a speaker of Welsh primarily, I would like to say that the people who have an interest and uh, an intimate understanding of language issues clearly are able to see things much, much more clearly. Firstly, I'd just like to say that I am dismayed and disgusted by the silence from the European Union, uh, with all the proclaimed adherence to human rights and you know, their calls for human rights to be established and maintained all over the world, 
accepted in their own backyard. And I think, I think that is disgusting and a disgrace. As far as the UK is concerned, I'd just like to point out one little fact which will interest you, and that is the, the behaviour of the media on October the 1st in response to the referendum. What actually happened? And I think this shows how small countries and smaller language groups uh, respond. Though, of course, Catalan is a huge language group, Welsh is a small one. We have around 600,000 speakers, but uh, the number is growing every year. Uh, but uh, I had a look at the coverage and the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, um, virtually ignored what was going on. There were some bits on the news. There were uh, pictures of the police action and of people shouting in the streets. But really, you know, it was of passing interest. We have a, a domestic uh, radio service in Wales. It's called BBC Wales. And there is a Welsh language equivalent called BBC Cymru. Now, BBC Wales is very much a middle of the road station. And on the Sunday, they had their usual diets of mid-Atlantic Anglo-American pop and very little else. They scarcely serve the needs of the people of Wales or, or reflect our culture and our local news or international news, for that matter. We also have a, a television channel, Channel Petor Cymru, S4C, as it's called in English, um, and they operate a, a Welsh language service. And what did they do in contrast to the BBC, who seemed to do the thing? S4C uh, sent a camera crew out and uh, put out a documentary on the referendum in Catalonia. A very interesting and balanced one, I thought. Uh, with a, a Catalan friend of ours who speaks Welsh, uh, leading the camera crew around and explaining what was happening. And BBC Radio Cymru, the radio service, the state broadcaster, as I sometimes call them, uh, in Welsh, in Wales, they broadcast from Catalonia all Sunday morning uh, as things were uh, working out. Now, that's, I think, just exemplifies how uh, the attitudes vary. In Wales, we um, take a great interest in what's happening in Catalonia for our own purposes, of course, for our own independence struggle, but because we want to express our solidarity with you as well. And I'm very glad of this opportunity here today to reiterate uh, that solidarity and to wish you well. And to tell you that uh, for myself, for my friends in uh, the party and people from other parties, in Westminster, we are watching, we are making our views known, and we will do whatever we can to help you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for for your intervention. Um, now let's finish that first part of the debate. Uh, with Angus McNeil um, from SMP. Angus, if you want to start, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. Yeah, I mean, I just wouldn't have much to say. I just echo a lot of what we've heard. Um, Howell's uh, chat there was very eye-opening indeed and worth recounting uh, what happened three years ago. I did note Howell talking, he was from a small language group of 600,000. I mean, from a language group of less than 100,000, probably closer to 60,000 in Scottish Gaelic, but still there's support here, as indeed there are in our neighbours in the Faroe Islands, who are, I see quite often on social media, and indeed politicians in Finland as well and other places. There's great support uh, for the Catalan uh, situation. And I think it's understandable when we, when we look back in the sweep of history over the last 100 years. 100 years ago, there were 50 independent nations on Earth, and some of those were large empires, as we know. Now there are 200 nations uh, on Earth, uh, independent nations, just about at the United Nations. Europe alone has got 50 independent countries. Uh, therefore, the, the movement uh, towards independence has been quite a normal and natural movement uh, that many have had and many have struggled with, and many have just got uh, over the decades uh, past in the past century or so. Um, one of the problems that we all have to grapple with with Catalonia. Somehow Catalonia is in a situation where it can be held hostage and people don't uh, say very much at all. And I'm often uh, tweeting around Giver, Giver Hofstad who's got opinions on every country from Brazil to Russia 
to Belarus, to whatever else, uh, but yet is stuck dumb uh, when it comes to the situation of um, uh, Catalonia and is a prominent European politician and he should uh, show a bit of the courage that was required earlier, but he struck down with this. Uh, the situation in, in Belarus um, is not dissimilar, surely. Um, the situation with Donald Trump, when he said that he wasn't going to respect the ballot box, he was quickly sat on by his own side in, in America. But the situation in uh, the Iberian Peninsula, where Catalonia is held hostage, again, uh, seems to be uh, something that's just one of life's anomalies, it would appear. Uh, and as Hewell pointed out, the media, uh, our media, has uh, lack of interest in it and lack of explanation at the time three years ago, other than the fact that violence turned up on the TV screens, violence from the, from the Spanish uh, state actors, disappointingly. Um, the, I suppose the other point that we have to remember in all this is that there are people in prison, people in prison, uh, for arranging ballot boxes. They have not used any violence, they've not used knives, they've not used bombs, they've not used guns, they've not used bullets, they've not used swords. They've been completely peaceful uh, in the following of the democratic process, but yet have ended up in jail. And when you express your opinion with a banner, uh, you get removed from democratically elected office in, in a part of the European Union in 2020. Now that is an astonishing thing to say, and I think somebody else has remarked on that, but that that can happen, and that has happened. It, it's almost, what it, it's where will they go next? Uh, what, at what point of a ridicule of democracy can be done by the Spanish Supreme Court and everybody else seems to keep continue shrugging their shoulders? And that's a hugely uh, disappointed area. Uh, like like Howell was saying in Wales, and I think we said it's also in Ireland, uh, and as I mentioned, Finland and the Faroe Islands and probably Iceland and a number of other uh, countries, there's great sympathy um, uh, for the Catalan situation. Uh, hopefully we are uh, useful to you in, uh, or at least uh, an element of encouragement uh, to you in your uh, process to ensure that the Catalan people uh, get their independence if that's what they want to have. Uh, it should be easily and easily demonstrated at the ballot box. And one way or the other, this thing resolved at the ballot box is not resolved by jailing uh, democratically elected politicians or removing democratically elected politicians uh, from office. So um, with that, I'll park my words there, uh, but my, my heart and my head are with the democratic wish of the people of uh, Catalonia to determine their own future. And if they determine one way or the other, that is their right and they should be supported in that, but they should not be thwarted uh, from being able to decide that. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, I, I'm good. Sorry for for you, for you speaking. Uh, now this is the first, the, the the final part of the first part of the debate. Uh, let's start with the questions. Um, if you have something from both of you, Carlos. If not, I'll start with one of here that I have for myself. Is that okay? Right. Um, how legitimate you think the referendum was and how you think independence would have been declared effectively? Uh, Sean, uh, would you like to share your thoughts? I'd be happy to. Laura, can you just repeat that? Yes. Uh, how legitimate you think the referendum was and how do you think independence would have been declared effectively? Okay, well, uh, the, 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 I'm just thinking back. This discussion has brought me back to some of the scenes from, that, uh, uh, from Catalonia during the referendum. And I remember the firefighters and how they kind of were a wall of uh, solidarity protecting people trying to go to the polls. I also remember a lot of the scenes from people, uh, you know, as someone earlier said, people of all ages uh, who have maybe dreamed about an independent Catalonia, finally having the opportunity to go and vote for it and how precious people, uh, you know, held the vote. Uh, and then the kind of the violence in terms of stopping people from getting to, to the polls. Um, yeah, and those scenes, I think, were shocking scenes for people uh, all around the world, world but also, uh, you know, 
in supposedly democratic Spain, in supposedly democratic Europe. Um, and I think it just tells us so much about the times that we're in that this can actually happen, that a peaceful move movement can be uh, uh, criminalized in such a way uh, where, you know, uh, there, there is no justification for what the Spanish state did in terms of how they try to uh, browbeat people and repress people. Um, and uh, as we know, uh, when people are faced with this kind of repression, it often emboldens people, it strengthens people, it, uh, it, it will um, strengthen their will and their determination to fight on and to fight for justice and freedom uh, uh, and to see through their, uh, their right to, to determine their own destiny. So um, I, I thought that the, the, the uh, you know, taking forward the referendum was the right thing to do. I thought that the various attempts by the Spanish state to block this at every opportunity. At the end of the day, the Spanish state um, does, is not interested in allowing the people of Catalonia to have a democratic say on their own future. They will constantly try to find a way to say this is anti-democratic, this is not allowed legally, this is anti-constitutional or unconstitutional. And I think that that is what we are going to face here in Ireland as well, uh, where there is uh, in, in the um, Good Friday Agreement or the Belfast Agreement, there is a process and a set of mechanisms uh, to end partition. But uh, much of this is depend on, dependent on the British government to give, give the green light to have a border poll. And they can come up with any reason to try and block this. Uh, and I think that they will attempt to do that. So. Uh, you know, uh, having, the having the referendum, I think, uh, was the right thing to try and do. I thought, in my opinion, uh, the, the vote for independence uh, was overwhelming. Um, the, it, it appeared to me that a majority of people, uh, uh, and I know it's not, not everybody agrees with independence, uh, uh, and that there are different political parties, but it appeared to me at least and we had, as people before profit, we had representatives there in Barcelona um, who were witnesses to, to the, the referendum. Uh, and there was actually other, other people from our uh, council that were on the ground. Uh, and they believed that this was a very democratic process uh, and that, uh, it, 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 that, the, that the, the, the vote for independence uh, was a, a real expression of the will uh, of a majority of people in Catalonia uh, at that time. So, uh, you know, I think that the, 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 there's been an attempt, obviously, to stop the, the forward momentum. Uh, and I only hope that uh, people are emboldened. I think we have to campaign to get uh, the political prisoners out, to, to have all those jail sentences rescinded as soon as possible. Uh, uh, and for the, we, we need international pressure uh, to uh, send the Spanish state the message that this can continue. Um, and, and maybe uh, the upcoming election uh, can bring about a new arrangement and, and, and open things and open doors again uh, so that there can be forward momentum. Can I come in at this point, Laura, would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, in, in Scotland at the moment, we're sort of faced with a, an issue that is uh, around the next referendum. Do we need or do we have to have the agreement of the UK government uh, to have it, which I call the Boris Veto, and I've got an argument inside their own party about this. Um, I don't think we do. The big issue is to establish the legitimacy of the view of the Scottish people. Now, we either do that, we've started to talk about referendums, but most countries haven't become independent by referendums. Most have become independent at elections. And as Sean pointed out, that not everybody in Catalonia is for independence, indeed not everybody in Scotland is, and that's why you have referendums, because if there was a unanimity of opinion, 100%, you wouldn't need a referendum, such as do we want the sun to rise tomorrow? We don't need a referendum, that because we all do. Uh, but do we want to be an independent country? There are different views, and we go with the view of the majority in a democracy. But as a way of establishing the will of the people is the point that is really important. And if I can bring perhaps a discordant note as well from the Catalan situation from three years ago, we have to think about what we do after we declare independence uh, because Catalonia did declare independence and then it seemed very, very easy for the Spanish state 
I was dismayed. I mean, I was on the side of the Catalans wanting independence, but I was dismayed at the ease with which the Catalans, at which the Spanish state then removed uh, Catalan independence. So the important thing is establishing the will of the people and getting that done and getting that recognized by the people, because as was said earlier, uh, the power of the people is stronger than the and people in power. But you have to get that uh, established the way to legitimacy there. And then of course, uh, make sure you're planning of what you do after the moment you declare independence. Thank you. Can I just say something very quickly about that? Um, I just, just, I just, want to say just one more thing, just one hmm. more thing. Uh, Angus, are you staying with us longer or are you leaving I'm, now? I'm going to have to go in a minute. I'm just waiting for Howell to come in and I'm interested to see you and then I'm going to run. <laughs> Thank you. So go for it. Yeah, well, I, I just wanted to say, you know, when oppressive states don't like the will of the people, they then attack the process of expressing that will. That's clearly what's happened in Catalonia. And one of the reasons why the UK central government now is opposing the further referendum on Scottish independence um, is because they know what the results will be. And um, by the way, they're entirely indifferent at the moment to a referendum in Wales uh, because support for independence most recently is in the mid thirties rather than in the mid 50s, as I'm delighted to say it is in Scotland. And uh, looking at uh, Ireland... It's a, it's, the it's a domino. Once we start, you'll, you'll come along. Yeah, as ever, we'll be following you. Um, <laughs> looking over at our Irish friends as well. Well, I was about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm half you Irish. Know. My mother's from Waterford, and I see exactly what they've achieved with their independence. The lead, the lead nation now in the, in the British Isles, probably in economic terms. Thank you. Absolutely. So, um, no, that's what I wanted to say. I, I just wanted to also to tell you one thing I forgot when I was talking about the referendum itself. I was in a school in the, during the morning and there was a huge crowd of people pressed against the gates, against the bars. They couldn't get in because the voting couldn't start. And they let in an elderly lady. She told me she was 83 years old. And she told me that she had been waiting all her life to vote for independence throughout the dark years of the shadow of of Francoism, and this was her opportunity. And the Spanish state just snatched that away from this lady who'd been waiting all those years. And again, that is shocking, I think. Uh, can I come in, Lord, just for a, a quick second, just and I suppose the, the scenes that we did witness on our television screens and what we read in the papers with regards to three years ago um, and the referendum was truly amazing. I mean, we seen the amount of people who were going to the, the polling stations, but there was police brutality. You know, people were still very much determined to go there. And as Sean said earlier, one of the, the, the iconic images probably of the last decade was the fire brigade stand protecting the people. I think that's probably one of the most iconic images that this world has seen for a while. And I think it's very, very important that recognition where firefighters protecting people. That's their job. It's not normally to protect their job against the state because they normally are employed by the state. But I think if you look, I was in Barcelona, I think the year prior to the, the referendum and it's at the Independence Day, where you have millions of people on the streets of Barcelona. Absolutely amazing scenes. So if, the, if you were thinking, is a referendum the right thing to do? Look at the amount of people who took to the streets and all the years leading up to it on Independence Day. And look at the amount of people who went to the polling station in fear that they could be brutalized, and many people were, but they went and they did it. So in my view is that with regards to the call why the referendum was right, you just have to look at the numbers. The numbers speak for themselves, in my view. In Ireland, I hope that we get our referendum soon. <laughs> we have called for a referendum to be held in the next couple of years and let's get that debate going and let's see where that takes us. But it is our job to convince people who do not want to belong to United Ireland. It's my job as an Irish Republican. Sean has already said that his party wants that to happen as well. So it's his job also to convince people that a referenda is the way to go. We need to work with each other. We need to support each other and we need to ensure that internationalism is the way to go because without international and solidarity and then we're left on our own and we can't afford that to happen so we are with you in this particular case and we hope that you're with us also thank you uh, can i ask uh, another question and then feel free to choose which of you is happy to answer 
So uh, how do you think it would be a good way out from the Spanish lack of justice and heavy persecution of Catalan pro-independence people? Um, a good way to, to get the independence and justice for, for Catalonia, for Catalans. Um, I, I think, you know, the cases on the European level must be pursued. Um, usually taking cases to, to the European courts, you know, it's, it's a long, long drawn out process. But it seems to me that the injustice here is so manifest that um, that is what, one way, that's one way of, of uh, taking the matter further and keeping the matter on the boil as well. Um, if there is any justice to be had at the European level, they will expedite those cases, and uh, I sincerely hope that, that they do. The other thing that, that, that's already been said, I think, is uh, how striking the mass protests in Catalonia have always been. You know, I've, I've just been awestruck by seeing the the people all all around the centre of of Barcelona, and also, of course, all the the uh, the activity at uh, the the lowest level. With all the mayors holding when we when we had the the previous uh, informal referendum or the testing of public opinion, um, you know I, I think you have to, as we always say, in terms of green issues, you know you have to think local, act local. I think as well, and you have to think national and international. And uh, so it's uh, well, what's the phrase? Uh, <laughs> the famous order from the Second World War, advance on all fronts, I think. Yeah, um, thanks. Thanks for, for sharing uh, your, your opinion with, with all of us. I think our audience is now quite engaged uh, with the debate. But now I think it's turn for Carlos from ANC England to ask you a question. Carlos? Yeah, just a quick one again to you, Highwell. Thanks again for the early day motion presented last week uh, condemning the removal of the Catalan president, which 23 MPs have already signed, and which, as you mentioned, is useful as a statement of opinion. Now, is there a minimum of signatures for a motion to go on the floor? Because either with this motion or, not, or another one, wouldn't it be nice to get the feeling of the House on the Catalan question? Yeah, I, I think certainly is the case. There is the um, facility for what I call backbench debates for ordinary MPs such as myself to apply for debates. And uh, some people listening in will, will know, of course, that we did hold one a couple of years ago. Um, the government is very uh, reluctant, of course, to comment in any way whatsoever on uh, uh, events within the, for the European Union, as we were formerly a member, I suppose. Um, and uh, their response to the referendum was, um, as a shorthand, I suppose, rule of law. You know, that the, the law had said that the referendum was illegal, and so the rule of law should have been applied. And um, the the right to democracy should have been denied. Um, so when we have tackled uh, government ministers on this, that's what we tend to get. You know, they 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 clam up, they they stand together with um, the government in Madrid, whether it's the uh, PP or it's uh, the current uh, current dispensation with the socialists. Um, in that respect, I suppose there's no difference from uh, governments in the past uh, with. Uh, an imperial history, whether that's France or as far as Algeria is concerned, or perhaps uh, the UK, as the, we were divested of our our, of our empire, um, or at least appeared to be divested of our empire. You know, socialist and conservative governments took the same line on that as well. Um, but to get back to your question, uh, I, I think the next step will be to get some backbench debates. It's difficult in some ways to frame questions. Um, about what's happening in Catalonia, which are in order, because as I said, you know, the, um, the internal matters of another country are, are not something that the government is prepared to, to address. So I think a backbench debate will be next, and also just to continue engaging with the all-party group. We do have a very capable and very uh, 
industrious uh, person working with us, that's Chris Bambury, who is now going to be um, setting up a, a, a bulletin on uh, democracy matters on the Iberian Peninsula, because we, we also, of course, have, have a, a distance interest, at a distance interest in what's happening in, in the Basque Country and also in Galicia. Um, but uh, that will be, uh, I think, I understand, published about, about weekly to monthly. So um, as an information point for both um, MPs in the House of Commons and Lords in the House of Lords and anyone else who wants to subscribe, um, that is uh, going to be, a, I think, a very useful and significant development. Thanks. And another quick one for Paul. Um, um, Paul, um, we've covered um, Catalonia. Angus has mentioned the second referendum in Scotland. Now, as for Ireland, is there a prospect that after Brexit, there are more chances to fight for Irish reunification with a renewed strength? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, Carlos, I, I think there is. I mean, I think that, I mean, as an Irish Republican, I mean, I've always been making the case for Irish unification because it's the natural thing to do for me. That's who I am. And obviously, as a Republican, I will certainly make no bones about it. We do have to convince other people that Irish unity is the way to go forward. I'm trying to do that in every day of my work. I talk to constituents about it. When I can, I try to speak to other sectors to do it when I can, but it's very, very important. But I have no doubt. And if you look at the, the debate on Irish unity, over the last two or three years, it has been really been lifted very much so to the fore because you now have business people speaking about Irish unity. You now have community sectors talking about Irish unity. You now have educational sectors talking about Irish unity. And that hasn't happened for a long time. So now the debate has really begun. It's up to the people who want to see Irish reunification to make sure that we take that um, case to everybody we possibly can. Because without, no doubt, um, and Sean and I will have different opinions with regards to the, the Brexit issue, but without no doubt, I mean, if people want to belong to Europe and Ireland, the best way to do that is for Ireland to be reunited again. So that's, that's an easy thing for me. And that's an easy thing because a lot of the young people who are coming through schools and universities, they want to belong part because they're Europeans. The best way to do that, they see it themselves, is to, to belong to um, a united iron. So that, that's on one aspect of, of, of our own politics where we want to continue to forward. But there's more and more people speaking about it. The case is there. The British government have for many years hid the figures with regards to the substantions and who will know some of this stuff within even in Wales as well about the, about the, the money it's called the Barnet um, formula, which is money which is given back um, from, from Britain to Ireland, Wales and, and Scotland, the north of Ireland. But they hate the amount of money that comes out of Ireland, whether that's in taxes, whether it's in corporation taxes or in many other initiatives. So we're trying to get the bottom with regards to the cost. But for me, it's not about cost. For me, as an Irish Republican, I want reunification of my country. No one else's country, my country. Um, I want that to happen sooner rather than later. And I will do all I can to convince as many people to make that a reality. And I have no doubt that day is fast approaching. Can I just make a point uh, about uh, Brexit, uh, which is opening the door to all kinds of discussions? I used to be on the Brexit committee. We, we would scrutinise the government. And um, for the first time in my life, I visited the north part of Ireland. Uh, and we actually drove down to the border. And I, I have actually found a very interesting picture. I don't know if you can see this now. I don't know if you, people can see that. Um, that is actually the border. As you can see, there are two sorts of Tam Academy. That is the border between North and South of Ireland. And I should say and point out that the better Tam Academy is on the southern side. Laura, uh, I, I wanted to come back on Laura's uh, question mm -hmm. about strategy. Um, and uh, I mean, I think for people around the world, people in Ireland, people in Scotland, Wales, we have a lot to learn from uh, the Catalan struggle. So I think that there's so many important lessons there. So there's a lot for the Catalan struggle and the activists there to teach rather than uh, asking us uh, 
how we think that the the, the Catalan uh, struggle can be won. But I but I do think that uh, it's very important, obviously, to see uh, the issue of Catalonia uh, receiving solidarity and the doll, uh, if it can be brought up in Stormont, if it can be brought up in the House of Commons uh, and whatever other uh, governmental bodies. Um, uh, but I but I believe uh, that the key way is still going to be through the mobilisation of large numbers of people, um, and uh, you know that could, that should be done within uh, Catalonia. Uh, that that puts massive pressure on the on the uh, authorities, but that has to happen uh, as much as possible as well right across uh, the Spanish state. So it would seem to me that uh, when it comes to the political prisoners. When it comes to the issue now of criminalizing people who fly the Catalan flag, that uh, we have to bring uh, as much pressure on uh, the people that are uh, uh, making the decision to repress uh, through mobilizations. So large numbers of people mobilizing in, in Madrid and elsewhere, I think. Uh, so that's an attempt to build up solidarity uh, and build up uh, support for the cause right across um, the various parts of the Spanish state. Um, I, I suppose it goes there too about convincing people that this is a democratic demand that they should support. And I, and I, you know, there are obviously trade unions that uh, crisscross right across the Spanish state. It seems to me um, that's one means of winning support. Uh, you know, up to even people going on strike to support these demands. Uh, the released prisoners, the end the repression, they accept the legitimacy of the. Uh, democratic aspiration for an independent Catalonia. I would think as well, uh, you know, the people of Europe uh, and elsewhere could be called to uh, stand in solidarity with the Catalan people. Uh, wouldn't it have been great if there had been a general strike across Europe uh, during the referendum when the Spanish state was attempting to repress it? Now, I think that these things are possible because trade unions and, and other groups will back pro progressive demands. Um, if there was a situation in Ireland where there was a referendum uh, that the British government was refusing to uh, acknowledge its legitimacy, I would hope that people across Europe and the world would come out and put pressure on their own governments um, uh, to send the message back that uh, you know repression and denial would be unacceptable. So. We're in a difficult situation where it's hard to mobilize people in the streets right now uh, because of the, the pandemic. Uh, I, I think we can't uh, give up the streets. I think we have to do it in a socially distanced way, which means masks and taking every uh, precaution that we can take. But, uh, but I think that the, the pressure is still gonna come through mobilization, disruption, uh, uh, and uh, you know people using their, the power that they have in the workplace. Um, so I think that that's, uh, you know, that that's the big challenge, I think, for uh, all these struggles. Um, and it's not easy uh, because there are determined forces that are out to stop this, because uh, as Angus said, look, the, the UK is facing a domino effect. And uh, I, I uh, you know, if Scotland became independent or Wales in the, it became independent, I would welcome these things. The UK is not a progressive entity. It has played a historically reactionary role right across the world, uh, you know, from empire to colonies to the Iraq war, Afghanistan war, uh, and, and what it does all over the world today. So its breakup should be welcomed by progressives everywhere. Um, and, I, and I think as, as uh, Paul said, uh, you know, the task here in Ireland, I think the discussion has already started. Uh, Brexit has sharpened the discussion around a united Ireland because of the threat of a border pole, or sorry, of a of a hard border. And I and I think we want the only way to remove the possibility of ever seeing a hard border again is by ending partition. So I think that that is something that is on the cards now. I think that the issues of the pandemic and the the massive inequalities that people are facing are going to intensify this issue. Um, you know the the crisis of having two healthcare systems on a small island island where you need one uh, one set of policies to keep people safe uh, just means that partitions are rational. So I, I think the key thing from our perspective is to try and convince 
the vast majority of working class people, whether they be in Dublin, Cork, uh, that a, a united Ireland will improve their lives. And I think that that's true here in the north as well, where I think we have to try and convince um, a majority of uh, people from all communities uh, that, that their lives will improve in a new Ireland. Uh, uh, so that's the big challenge. And, you know, a new Ireland is a genuinely new Ireland. We would come together, create a new constitution. Uh, I, I, if we were able to end partition through a referendum. And I think that we would want, uh, you know, the biggest debate and the greatest level of engagement and participation from people all across the island to determine what, uh, what kind of Ireland would uh, best suit their interests and, and improve their lives. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I think Carlos from Ireland uh, has got something to, to say. Carlos? Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, actually, I just wanted to um, kind of put together uh, a few uh, comments about some, some interventions. Because um, uh, Paul, Paul Maskey was uh, mentioning that uh, so we have to take uh, advantage of our opportunities. Uh, and I suppose uh, uh, we're talking about, uh, we've been talking about the Brexit which is a, a good opportunity to kind of uh, talk about uh, uh, ending partition of Northern Ireland, bringing a referendum. So, so I think, I think uh, um, there is the opportunity that is opening on, on uh, for, for, for that. Uh, on on Catalonia, it seems that uh, we are uh, Ireland kind of 100 years ago, you know, we kind of have to, um, the, our, um, our peers uh, are not playing the same game from the point of view of politically or from uh, repression. So, so we are in a situation that uh, um, I suppose it, it, it's difficult to kind of bring this uh, advantage, to, to, to get this, uh, take an opportunity and an, an advantage because we have kind of a, a repression uh, uh, fr from the, the Spanish state. So uh, I just, uh, um, I mean, one, one other thing, uh, Sean, that you were, you were mentioning was about uh, John Connolly, you know? It, is it the case that uh, maybe we need uh, a leader figure, uh, somebody that uh, uh, I suppose kind of uh, w uh, brings the working class into uh, creating maybe mass demonstrations or something that afterwards create a kind of a, a maybe through, as, as you were saying, to, to uh, strikes or something that creates uh, something that uh, breaks the, the, the point, create, creates a, a break within the establishment, not, maybe not only from, from Spain, but as well from the European Union. I mean, we find uh, in some, uh, as, as well, some, some of the comments from, from, from yourselves and as well from people on the, on the, on the internet that they were mentioning that uh, the problem in Europe as well is that they don't support. I mean, there is this, uh, um, uh, attack on the on the human rights, but uh, the Europe it doesn't respond. So, w what's the approach? Maybe looking back in history, is it leaders? Is it a political? Or how is best to resolve this uh, situation within Catalonia? Do you want me to benefit from and that maybe start? So, I think the Catalonian people already have many good leaders. Some of them are in jail now, unfortunately, and I think they have struck a blow already to the Spanish state. Because look at the publicity that was shown all around the world, could have been more, but look at the publicity all around the world that was seen three years ago. We still need to up the ante with regards to the campaign to get all political prisoners out. We have a, a duty on all of ourselves to campaign to get political prisoners released from jail. So that's, I think that's the very um, starting process. So we all need leaders. Leaders like James Connolly come along once in a lifetime. So, I mean, and I think that Catalonia have certainly shown um, leaders as well with regards to already doing that. So what we do need, we need the internationalism. That, that goes without saying. We need to continue to do events like this. That goes without saying. But here's the thing, because yes, do we need to take more radical approaches to get better results or quicker results? Sometimes you have to. But sometimes you also have to pay very smart. And I think three years ago, when the Catalonian people went to the polling stations to cast their votes on a referendum, I think that was a strike for their own independence. And I think it was a very brave thing to do. Second of all, I think the Spanish state 
made a hell of a mistake by beating people away from the polling stations. The world seen that, the world witnessed that. And I think that the Spanish state will regret that one day because people will think back three years ago, this day people are still talking about it. And I hope in another three years time that people could be still talking about it, but also saying, but now we have a date for another referendum. And I think that we have to remember the, the blows that were struck and three years ago were very, very important. But I also do think that the, the political prisoners is a big, massive issue that people have to get out. So, yes, you have an oppressive state in the Spanish government, and they will continue to be oppressive because they want to hold on to that part of, of, of obviously your country, of Catalonia. We have to find ways of releasing the shackles from Spain. We have to find ways of releasing the shackles of Britain on Ireland as well. But together we will do that. Together we will find it. And as someone says about the domino effect earlier on, I believe when one of these countries in Europe get their own independence, others will follow very, very soon. We just need the first country that will go that way. And I have no doubt whether that's in Ireland. I have, no, I have no doubt in my head that Scotland and Wales, Catalonia will follow shortly after, as well as the Basque country. And I have no doubt if it's in Catalonia, Basque country will get its independence, Scotland, Ireland and Wales will get its independence a short time afterwards, because I think then just takes one. And I think that's why the British governments and the Spanish governments are very afraid because they know that's the breakup of a number of other countries as well. So we need to continue on the journey that we're doing. We need to continue on to build political strength for those pro-independence parties. That's what we need to do. Continue to build that political strength in whatever way we possibly can do that. Thanks, yeah. Paul. Sorry, yeah, uh, you know, in terms of what Carla's uh, mentioned there, I mean, I, I, I hope that, uh, that Catalonia doesn't have to endure the 100 years in the way that we've endured 100 years of partition here because it's been a disaster for people across this island. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, yeah, it took a civil rights movement that started in 68 to kind of challenge the, 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 the unionist state that the partition had created in the north. Uh, and we still live with the legacy of that unionist state. And in the south, uh, you know, it's been, uh, there's been uh, in the last number of years, uh, people have had a campaign for basic rights for women and the LGBTQ community uh, and so on. So uh, I hope it doesn't look like that, where, we, where it's, um, I, I think that Paul's right. I think that uh, the Catalan struggle has momentum. I mean, I know it was pushed back, but that the, 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 the success of the referendum, even though it hasn't come, created what people wanted, is that it, it has really put on the map the legitimacy of the, of the Catalan demand for self-determination. I think the fact that, that, that the Spanish state was so violent, uh, will, it, it took massive repression to try and keep a lid on that demand. Um, so I think people will feel now that they are emboldened and that they should go forward. And I, and I think, yeah, I think as Kuhl said earlier, we have to fight on every front. So we try to uh, mobilize on the streets. We try to mobilize through trade unions. We try to mobilize people in their communities. We, we, I think that it's crucial that we campaign to uh, win the release of the uh, political prisoners and end the pro end exile and, uh, and and the crackdowns on activists. I think that, that that is one of the important appeals that I think can be made internationally. I mean that we can talk about what we can do on these islands, the campaign for the relief for the for the uh, imprisonments to be rescinded uh, and for an end to the kind of repression. Uh, that is happening right now, so we can we can make some concrete plans about how to how to do that. Um, uh, you know, but just oh, oh, yeah, there are already are many leaders uh, in Catalonia, and more leaders were were created as a result of uh, October first, twenty seventeen. There is new young people who became political as a result of the referendum, and who are now going to hopefully be activists and campaigners for the rest of their lives fighting for justice uh, and, and hopefully that will happen in their lifetimes. Um, the, the, the issue around James Connolly is that uh, Connolly for me uh, had a vision 
And I think it's not about just genuflecting the leader. It's about what was the vision. And I think envisions uh, are important to give people inspiration for what they're fighting for. Um, you know, so I, I am sure that there are Catalan leaders who have a vision for what a new Catalan can look like uh, that's more democratic, that's more equal, that's more socially just, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not just fighting, obviously, for Ireland or for Catalonia. We want to see a Europe that is more democratic. We want to see a Europe where it's a Europe uh, that is about the people's needs and the people's demands and not the elites at the top. Um, and I and I think that that is, uh, you know, that has become more clear now in the middle of this pandemic where our health systems are in, are, are, have been proved to be shown to be in crisis because of privatization and the lack of funding, where, you know, workers now across Europe and across the world have been told they're essential, but many of them are on uh, minimum wage or poverty wages. I think that issues of inequality and self-determination these issues all go hand in hand. So I think that there's actually, there is going to be more opportunities to fight for economic justice, along with fighting for democratic justice uh, at the same time, that these aren't separate issues. And that I think the pressure of this pandemic and the economic um, turmoil that it's creating, I think is going to open, open up more challenge or more opportunities uh, for, you know, for these fights going forward. So I feel very optimistic uh, going forward in terms of what's possible here in Ireland uh, and what's possible when I look out at, you know, Scotland and, and, and elsewhere, uh, uh, you know, that there are, uh, uh, you know, movements developing real momentum uh, that are maybe we've been knocked off balance a bit because of the because of the pandemic. But I think people will find a way to continue to campaign both for things locally, but also to stand in solidarity with people internationally. And I would like to add here that actually current situation, current political situation is a bit tricky right now. On the past year, uh, there have been conversations between the Spanish and the Catalan governments in which the Spanish government has managed to send a message that the Catalan question was only an internal matter and was under control. While at the same time, as we have said earlier, Spain hasn't stopped the repression measures not just against the political direction of the movement, but also against thousands of activists. So there are elections in Catalonia in four months time, but the parties are divided and without a clear objective, a clear goal of what to do if for independent parties uh, win the elections, it's gonna be a bit complicated. So that's why from the Catalan National Assembly, we ask that if there is a 50% majority of the votes, in favor of pro-independence parties, this will provide another democratic mandate to go ahead and to declare the independence of the Catalan Republic, but at this time really fighting for international recognition. Thank you, Anna. Um, so, I'd like to ask uh, another question uh, in regards to uh, political solidarity. Uh, do the international alliances made by political parties in these islands sometimes act as an obstacle to solidarity with the Catalan independence movement, movements? Is the evidence that relationship between British Labour and PSOE or the Liberal Democrats and Ciudadanos block Catalan solidarity, block Catalan solidarity in England? Do we see this sort of thing play out among Irish parties? Well, I can answer on the Lib Dem question because we used to have a very good relationship from ANC England with the Lib Dems a few years ago. And then it did seem to change when Ciudadanos went into the European Parliament and they shared the same parliamentary group. And ever since then, um, it, it, I, I guess, I don't know if blocking is the, 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 the word, but definitely it, relations haven't improved. I don't know if Highwell from the front um, has seen some of that trend too. 
I, can I say that's, you know, obviously from my own party, and I think I can speak for the SNP, and I know our friends from Sinn Féin and from other parties, you know, we, we take a consistent view on this, and it's, it, it, it is, I have to concede, it's clearly in our interest. Um, when, when the shape of Europe was being considered previously, uh, I mean, quite a long time ago, when we were pressing for an Europe of the nations, of the regions and the nations, um, clearly we were happy to work uh, together. Uh, it went the other way and we have the Europe of member states and clearly those parties in contention for control of, of member states, such as the Labour Party, uh, you know, they, they tread very carefully indeed. Um, if that analysis is correct, you, one can quite see why they would be like that. But it is hugely disappointing. You know, when, when uh, for example, when the referendum was on in Catalonia, my stance, my party stance, the stance of uh, grassroots members of other parties in Wales was very clear. I mean, we were appalled at what happened with, uh, with the, the, the referendum. Um, the leader in Wales, the, the first minister, uh, Mr. Carwin Jones, um, his response to what happened on October the 1st was he said that he, he condemned violence on both sides, which, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. I can't see where, where was the violence on the other side, you know? But uh, the, they have an interest in maintaining, maintaining that fiction and uh, that solidarity between ruling groups quite obviously is an impediment. Uh, can I just say one other thing? We were talking a moment ago about um, about where, where we are uh, uh, with leadership. I, I think the, the referendum was a moment of clarity. You know, it's, uh, in my own country, it's, 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 not, it's still to an extent a, a sort of vanguard movement uh, as has been the case in, in other parts of the world. The SNP springs to mind. We have always been a minority, but it seemed to me that um, on October the 1st, that was another step towards being um, just not a, a, a moment of clarity, but to being a, a mass movement, to being almost an un unconscious expression of the will of the people, as it were. You know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to pin down, um, but it seems to me that that, that was a turning point. It certainly happened in Scotland. Um, and uh, uh, in Wales, uh, quite interestingly, the independence uh, was supported just a few years ago by about 5%. Not even a, um, everyone in my own party supported independence. And that was 30, 35%. Um, Brexit is another turning point, another moment of clarity for us, I think. And I certainly hope that, uh, that, that, that uh, the results will eventually be in, in our own independence after a long process of, of many years, I suppose. But I mean, to get back to the point that, that, that you started on, you know, clearly um, uh, they stick together as we stick together. Well, Laura, uh, in t I just wanted to comment on what Joanna said there, because I think that's very, very important. Um, I think that uh, it, it, we, we should discuss with the, the, uh, the assemblies, uh, Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland, if there's an initiative we can take together around political prisoners that, that, that we could do now uh, or plan for. And I think that that would be important. I think, uh, you know, that's something I think that there'd be quite a bit of support and people could collaborate together on uh, and, uh, and political parties, also trade unions and progressive groups. But I think what you were saying, what Joanna was saying about the, if the depending on how the elections go, um, that uh, if there was, uh, if it, it, from a kind of uh, self-determination independence point of view, the elections went well, uh, and that the call was put out that this was now, that the Spanish state should accept the legitimacy and the reality of the um, Catalan independent republic, I think that would be a call I think people would respond to internationally uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, backing that. Uh, and obviously that would be a great thing if we were able to, to, to be in solidarity with that call. 
Uh, obviously, that's going to depend on what happens on the ground. And, uh, you know, everything's been thrown up into the air by the pandemic. So I wish people well who are campaigning for independence and progressive change in the upcoming elections. Um, but, I, but I think that's important in terms of like what we can do internationally. And I would say, you know, uh, on issues like uh, Palestine and, and Catalan, there is there are parties in Ireland, uh, whatever their differences are, that tend to be in support of and will raise them in the various jurisdictions and local councils and trade unions. Um, uh, sometimes it will be a debate about how, how far can you go with the solidarity demand uh, and so on. That would be the nature of the debate. But I, but I think that there are, uh, because of Ireland's experience of colonization, partition, uh, you know, the, the, the troubles in the north, uh, and so on, that there are there are many people who understand, uh, you know, why internationalism is crucial, why why solidarity is crucial, why people should have the right to self determination as a as, as a kind of this is basic democracy uh, all over the world. Um, so I think that uh, you know that that is something that I think we can build on here. Um, but obviously, what people do around the world as well reflects back and, and impacts back in Ireland because uh, it gives people more confidence about their struggles here when they see uh, those struggles reflected in, in, in other campaigns around the world. I think, Joanna, uh, you as a, an international care coordinator, you have to make a big note of this and take action in the ANC as much as you can. I will, I will, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Ireland, do you have any other question? No, no, not another question, but I, I think, uh, uh, I mean, ju just to, I suppose, just to thank uh, all the interventions uh, and I suppose the, 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 the solidarity that has been expressed by all the different parties, uh, which is uh, very well welcome. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it will be good to, uh, I mean, as Sean kind of commented and, and Joanna, see um, kind of the results of the, uh, the elections uh, in January, February, sorry, uh, and see how, how they play up and, and see if we can move forward into maybe afterwards uh, having a 50% of, um, uh, over 50% and afterwards uh, move towards a, a, a republic, a Catalan republic. So. But um, yeah, just uh, again, just uh, th thanks, uh, thanking uh, at least for, from my, my side, uh, all the participants. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, we've been able to revisit again the historic day of the 1st of October in 2017. There are decades in which nothing happens, and there are weeks in which decades happen, and that's precisely what happened to Catalonia in those days. As Sean said, the momentum was there, but we didn't manage to go all the way. Repression has been harsh, but it is our responsibility to gain back the initiative and ensure those scenarios happen again. It will only be possible though, as Paul said, with international support and hence why these events like today are so important and why as the Catalan National Assembly will keep working for international recognitions of the Catalan Republic. And we thank the, solidar the solidarity received these three years by Play, the SNP, Sinn Féin and People Before Profit. And thanks to Hegel for the immense work of the APPG these years. International solidarity, of course, bo works both ways and Catalonia will always be your ally for the independence of Scotland, of Wales, and the reunification of Ireland. Thanks all panelists for tonight's event, and thanks Laura and Carlas for making it possible. Also keep in the loop in our social media too, as on Friday, the King of Spain is visiting Barcelona, and there will be once more mass rallies reclaiming independence. Until heaven is generally storm, thanks everyone. <laughs>